Hey, throw the Skydio down. We're doing an unboxing. Are you wearing pants under that table? <laughs> you want to know? Welcome back to the channel. Skydio 2 drone review. Hey, the best news about this drone is that regardless of your skill level flying drones, whether you've had a drone or you've never had a drone, this is it. You have purchased the right drone. You have purchased the last drone you're gonna need for a very long time because this one does it all. Look at this, it is a stunner. I think that for the weight and the size, the form factor of this, everything is perfect. You know, it's definitely compact enough. It's not too large. It fits in every backpack. This is the standard Skydio case. Uh, it works very nice. It slings right over your shoulder. You can take it everywhere. You can throw it off of a roof two stories up and it's very resilient. You can see this drone, although we haven't flown it since that episode, uh, should still fly and I wouldn't be feeling any otherwise. You know, I sling this on my bag and I can go, sky's the limit. Okay guys, leaving anywhere for an extended period of time, plane flight, out camping in the wilderness in a car, whatever it is, you're gonna want this extra rugged case from Skydio because it allows you to take all the accessories with you in one very secure box. We love this, especially out on the road. You saw the resilience of the other case. It's good, this is epic. And again, if you've got three batteries, this is gonna let you put all of them in there with your spare props. You're gonna want those as well with the controller, with the beacon, your lenses, and pretty much everything else. One of the best parts about this drone is how the battery, like Apple's MagSafe, disconnects and connects. Amazing. Boom, look at that. Battery, completely full, love it. You can check it without having to turn the entire drone on. Such a nice little feature. They thought of so many little things here, especially for the first newcomers into the drone experience. They really nailed a lot of these smaller things that are just gonna make your onboarding process that much smoother. On batteries, you're gonna want at least two. The life of this battery is about 24 to 26 minutes. Nothing is worse than getting your drone out there, you're getting all these sweet shots, you're looking at them over your phone, and then boom, you've gotta drive back, skate back, walk back home every single time to charge the battery. You're gonna want at least two. We have three here, uh, and three really kind of is that magic sweet spot. The other big thing with these drones is that for every 20 minutes of footage that you've got, maybe a third of it is useful because of shadows or because of positioning or just, you know, maybe maneuvering to get right in that sweet spot of the sky. Okay, on lenses, come highly recommended by us are the ND filters from Skydio. You get three in the package. They're beautiful. If you're living in a sunny area, just as we are in sunny Silicon Beach, California, Dimension Software, these ND filters are really gonna allow you to capture at midday those very brilliant, colorful shots without a ton of lens flares. These are gonna let you do it. If you really want those like creative shots, if you can't always dial in the lighting, these filters are gonna help keep the colors and all the balances in check so that you don't have to do so much of that in post. These are amazing and they're well worth the extra money. Okay, so you've heard about the incredible autonomous drone. You've heard about these really slick lenses. They're gonna keep all your shots that much sharper. The best part about the Scottio drone, and I would say if you are on the fence about buying one, do not purchase unless you're also going with this beacon. In fact, if you're buying a Skydio, definitely pick up the beacon. You need this. It's what unlocks all the crazy abilities that this drone offers, things that other drones don't, it's all rolled into the beacon. What this allows you to do is not only increase the range that you get, uh, but you can just put it in your pocket. You can hold it in your hand as you're walking, skating, driving a car to reposition the drone, to reconfigure where the drone sits in the sky. If you do wanna park it on one side of the sun or the other to follow behind you from in front, do those crazy, 360 swirly swoos up into the sky, corkscrews, whatever it is, you can do it right through a couple presses of this beacon. 
and it really unlocks all that power just right in your fingertips, this is the way to go. This is what so many other drones don't offer, and this is really where that Skydio shines. Absolutely pick up the beacon. We're gonna dive a little bit surface level into some of the other functionalities through the app, things that are unlocked with this beacon. Again, if you're going with the Skydio 2, you're definitely gonna to wanna to pick up the beacon. It's the only thing here that I would say is a must. It's not really optional, you need this. Otherwise, you're just really missing out on some of the highlights that this drone offers that other drones don't. Real quickly, on cameras, this drone really packs them in here. You've got three cameras on top that this is using just for obstacle avoidance. And I have to say, of all the drones with obstacle avoidance built in, this does it the best. Yes, it's not crash proof. In fact, we've <laughs> crashed this one already a couple times during the shots of this video and also much before. It's got three more on the bottom and you've got to keep them clean because even if it senses a little bit of dirt on there, you're going to maybe get a message in your app. If you don't get the message in the app though, it greatly reduces the ability of this drone to auto detect obstacles, especially smaller ones, power lines, anything that's like really less than an inch or so, it's gonna have trouble seeing. So it's got six of those cameras built on, and then the main camera, 4K, full frame. Of course, we record at 24. You're probably gonna to wanna to do similarly if you're recording your own videos, 24 frames per second. This camera is pretty incredible. One big wish that we would have was that it would be the ability to control the gimbal camera through the beacon. Maybe it's coming, would be a hot feature. It is possible to do this for the other controller, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, but the actual video footage from this camera is insane. I think that it boosts the color a little bit more than some of the other drones. It's not unnatural. It really does add a vivid lifetime kind of perspective to a lot of the shots that really make this drone shine yeah, and combined with those ND filter lenses, especially on a sunny day, mm, oh my God, there really is nothing better than what we've seen with this drone and the footage that we're able to capture from the Skydio 2. Okay, this is gonna be your first introductory screen to your Skydio drone. Obviously you could hit the fly button now and get started. Let's just cover some quick basics here. Height floor, this is a really novel feature. You can see that it's going to keep your drone either above eight feet, which is going to aid in any collisions with human beings, cars, other things that you're probably gonna to wanna to avoid. What it does though is limit the ability of the drone to automatically follow you. So it's just something to think about every time. By default, I have it enabled for safety. If I'm in an area that's pretty remote, maybe I'm the only person around, I'll go ahead and disable it. Does it make a difference? Yes. I've had this drone with the height floor disabled, track me through all kinds of absolutely insane wilderness, and it doesn't have any problem keeping up. With the height floor enabled, it seems to sometimes get lost between should it raise, should it lower, and, and then it'll pop up a little bit of a message and then tell you, okay, you've gotta go find it, no big deal. Uh, but just so you know, I always enable it by default. So onto settings, you've pretty much got everything here. I use the HVAC 265 and 4K at 24 frames because 24 frames are what's gonna get you that real cinematic effect, especially if you're recording for YouTube or anything else. The natural eye is so used to those Hollywood videos, 24 frames is what it recognizes. But hey, you can go all the way up to 60 frames a second if you so choose, and this drone handles that beautifully. Honestly, the footage, if you're really looking for that incredible frame rate, it's all there. Okay, one thing with the Skydio drone that's a little bit of a limitation, but no big deal really, is that you can only browse your media when the drone is off and not flying. So there are some kind of circumstances where maybe you've got it up there and you just want to rewind on something to see how it's captured. You're not gonna be able to do that. Something to keep in mind, not a big deal, uh, but just so you know. Also accessing the media can be a little bit slow sometimes and the bandwidth between the phone, once you go to download it from the drone, if you've got a larger snippet that's in the gigabytes, it's gonna take some time. Again, it's not a big deal if you have the time, it's just something to think about. The app does a fine job of allowing you to start and also mark a stop so that you can just pull sections of your clips down and it can do that obviously much faster. So great thinking to you guys, Skydio, the interface works really well. If your drone does crash all the way up to that last frame, you're gonna have to probably rewind or cut your frame a little bit short. The app has a tendency in the media player to have an issue with it. Uh, we've had a couple different crashes that resulted in the ability to extract the media, uh, but you couldn't get it all the way to the end. I don't know if it has something to do with like packets transmitted and you know, 
Uh, I, I don't know what the technical difficulty is there, but uh, it was not able to grab some of those last frames that would have been super clutch, especially for like really fun YouTube videos, just to be like, hey, look, here's how my Sky Neo drone blah, fell from the sky. Overall, this app works really well. It looks great, and I would give it an A, maybe even an A plus. If there's any updates coming in along the way, mm, can't wait to see them. One big one that we thought about here would just be better ability to control the gimbaled camera to be able to position it where we want should be no big deal, right? It's already available in the controller. Why not express the same functionality within the app? Hey, Skydio, if you're listening, maybe V2. This is the Skydio 2 overview with Dimension Software. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did making it. This thing is badass. We can't wait to continually use this thing throughout all of our videos, get some cool crazy shots. We did it indoor, we did it outdoor. It don't matter. We're gonna risk it all for you. So hit that subscribe button, get the old likeys going. We need your support. We gotta get over this 100 sub mark so we can get that custom URL slug for Dimension Software so we can continually get more views and keep making badass content for you. We love you. We're getting fired soon because we're supposed to be doing other things, but we're not. See you on the next one. Ciao.